artificial intelligence is changing the way artists and filmmakers create content. An awful lot of it is very, very good, but sometimes things just don't work out and the results can be pretty weird. These clips have all been produced from still photos of Scarborough. Clip number one. This is a photo that was taken on Scarborough's foreshore around the 1920s. The two policemen are looking very smart. The prompt for the software was get the figures to dance or move about. Oh dear, not what I expected. Well, we start off okay. Both the coppers move a little bit and then they try to outdo each other by miraculously swapping uniforms and bodies. Well, the next attempt with a slightly different prompt looked like this. They were clearly having a great time and a few more coppers decided to join in. While they were all dancing and a prancing, someone has painted a new sign on that shop. Plus we have had a bit of a makeover with the shops. All gone and replaced with new. It's funny, but it's a failure. So this is clip number two. The lady was photographed outside her house in Old Key Street. I asked the program to make her move forward. She starts off good, but then loses the boots and gains a cracking pair of legs. Looking on, the guy with the ladder is replaced by someone else. Now as she moves forward, the child's head somehow manages to turn through 180 degrees. Ouch! The next attempt is a lot better. Her legs are much more in keeping, but look at the child. The little one's natural hair is wild and curly. But as she moves forward, the kid gets a new hairdo. The magic of Key Street. Also, the woman has a better hairdo and a new face. It must have been very appealing because the man with the ladder has got very excited. Naughty. Now one more last attempt and we have a more natural look to the child and the woman. No new hairstyle, but where did that giant man come from? Now this is clip number three. It's outside Scarborough Market in the late 1800s, probably 1890. I set the prompt to move the people. It isn't that bad to be fair, although notice that the program has decided to destroy Crosley's Hotel. It has also decided to make the market building into a hotel. The second pass, for some reason, the software decided to make this a winter scene. This time, Crosley's has escaped demolition. I have no idea why it decided to make it a snow scene. Note the Christmas tree. The lady in the wheelchair likes it because she gets a bit of a wiggle on and heads in for a closer look. She even gets cured. The wheels disappear and she can walk again. Magic. Now this is clip number four. This is Cross Street, probably again around the early 1900s. The odd thing here is the person in the foreground is walking backwards. And the funny bit is the wheel of the cart. It disappears and changes into a youth. Now that is clever. This is Cross Street for you. Now clip number five. The opening of Peasel Park in 1912. This take is pretty bad actually. The crowd move, which is what I wanted. Yet when you look closer, most of them are being mutilated. Now this is clip six. It's a scene from the tree walk that was on Pizone Park Island. I wanted the carriage to move over the bridge, but that's not quite what I was hoping for. It makes the bridge look like a cardboard cutout and the carriage just runs behind it. Now this is clip seven. Two Victorian ladies taking a scroll. Girl? Stroll. At Scarborough Spa in the late 1800s. They actually move really well. But the people behind them have somehow acquired a large carrot, or perhaps it's one of Ken Dodd's early tickling sticks.
So, clip number eight. Back to Pizon Park again, around about 1912. I wanted the girl on the left to walk forward. The software had other ideas. We're all walking backwards again, and also there is a woman who morphs into a flower bed, and her partner doesn't even realise she's gone. Now this is clip number nine. We're back down in that uh, weird place called Key Street again in the 1890s. I asked the software to m move the horse-drawn cart, but it seems to have a thing about carts as this uh, program. It loves messing about with them. Simple request, move the car and the people forward. Uh, this one is really odd. The two girls see the lads in the distance and their cart starts to become a cannon, as it does. The barrel rises. Two of the lads fall to the ground and are sucked into the gun. The barrel then changes into a youth. And just to emphasise the special powers of that gun cart, more people are produced and spewed out. And meanwhile, over to the left, the ship's crane is morphing into an even bigger gun. Stay away from Key Street. So this is clip number 10, back to the mysterious Key Street again, and this time, 1930s. The two lads are bouncing down the street inside some Hessian sacks. Both are eating something. It must be some sort of shape-shifting fish sandwich. Try saying that after a few pints of Newcastle Brown Ale. The lads turn into the corner. The lads turn the corner and also turn into Beatle fans. Note the mop-top hairstyles. And they've had a change of face. Right, clip 11, back to Pazon Park, this time in the 1930s, or maybe the 1940s. I wanted to animate the waterfall, and it's done quite a decent job. But what is going on with the rowing boat? The man sat at the back with the striped jacket, displaying games with the lady in the front. He has gained a rather long extra hand. Oi, you, I'm talking to you. Now this is clip number 12. And we have some performers on the foreshore. Now, I'm not sure how to pronounce this. I think they're called Piros. I wanted them to look like they were moving and actually performing some routine. The first clip shows they're moving a little bit, but the crowd looks pretty awful. So this is the second attempt. And this time the crowd has become very angry, which in turn has affected the Piros. They are wrecking the stage. Mr. Caitlin should have paid them more. Now here we are on clip 13, and we are going back to the days of the trams. Again, probably about 1910, and we're at Falsgrave, far end of Scarborough. This is probably one of my favourite clips, actually. We have two guys walking along Falsgrave. The one on the left is pushing a bike, while his mate looks drunk. Now, coming along on the right is someone driving a very high-powered cart. Bottom right, a little girl makes a dash for it while turning to the camera and showing us that she also has a Beatles haircut. Coming out of the pub on the right is a chap from the 1960s. Well, that's LSD for you. Now, the second pass, we have a bit of one-upmanship with the two lads. The one with the bike says, I'm a magician and I can turn this bike into a cart. And he does. But his mate is not impressed and turns himself into a jockey sat on a very fast horse. The little girl on the right gets scared and falls to the ground and hides inside her frock. You know, the, um, the beard on there is quite strong actually. So this is another go with the software. The two lads are still at it. Do that trick again, says the lad on the right. The one where you turn your bike into a cart. Whoa, I didn't mean turn me into a cart. Clip 14. It wasn't just diesel trains that had power units at each end of a carriage. Here we see a push-me-pull-you jockey carriage. Clever how that horse walks backwards. Well, this is clip 15, Luna Park on Sunside. Make the wheel move, that is all I asked it to do. Sure, it moves, but it gets very bent. And would any of you like to be in one of those chairs? As the wheel completes its bendy cycle, 
the chairs and the people disappear. What also made me smile was this in the bottom left corner. One of the bumper cars has left the amusement park and taken someone for a spin on the East Pier. Value for money, you see, Scarborough. Well, this is clip 16 and there's uh, a few fishermen having a bit of a yarn sat on a bench from uh, over the road from the Harbour Bar or thereabouts on Sandside. This one's a bit crazy. We start off OK, then we see the third man seems to be putting a jumper over his head. That makes man five smile. Well, it's nearly over his face now, man four is thinking. Oh dear, number five. He's still laughing and also has a new hat and his face is changing. Man two is now getting worried. Man five has fallen asleep. Meanwhile, the guy stood up and developed a penis the size of a horse. It's all gone Pete Tong now. Number five is having his face chewed off by some mutant spaghetti. Two and three are becoming one. Number one moves behind number two and acquires a Tommy Cooper hat and a beard. Number five looks to have been shot. So that's artificial intelligence for you. Sometimes these things work really well. Other times, as you can see, we get some really, really odd and funny results. You have to do quite a lot of editing and uh, uh, experimentation to get what you're looking for. Well, I hope you've enjoyed watching these clips and I shall now leave you with our dancing policeman again. Thank you for watching.